test, test, microphone test, one, two, one, two. What's going on? It's DJ I Sizzle. It's your DJ's favorite DJ. Today, I, you know, I want to talk about um, DJ controllers. Sorry about the loud barking noise. The neighbor's dogs, they, uh, they get into it when they hear lawnmowers and weed whackers. And they hear people walking by. Um, yeah, a couple people over there, there's, there's a, I call them Lionel and then I call them, um, Gettysburg. Those are the two over there, the two dogs that they're always barking. So if you hear them back there, just say, what's up, Lionel? What's up, Gettysburg? Uh, let's talk a little bit about DJ controllers, right? So when I first started DJing, I got myself, I think it was like a $50 controller, <laughs> wasn't really anything. I hooked it up to a computer. It was it was a little skinny one like this. It was like this by like this. And I just started mixing. It didn't really have a lot of controls other than like a fader. You could scratch on it, but it was like very like primitive. As well as you could adjust your um, tempo as well. And I probably spent a good six months just every day just download the downloaded a couple different DJ programs. I didn't really know about Serato at the time or Rekordbox, so I just downloaded I can't remember what it was. It was like some free like <laughs> it was like please download me, uh donate if you can to keep this program alive, uh kind of program and everything. So, I started mixing, what did I start mixing? I was mixing hip hop, I was mixing uh some EDM, and then I was trying to mix pop music in it. And it was a good little starter board. I mean, I, I got to say like it was good because I didn't know if I was going to stick with it. And, you know, I was kind of going through like, you know, the phase of like, well, let me try this out. Let me try that out. So I did that. I recorded a mix um, for my girlfriend and I played it. And I just remember like sweating because I was so nervous <laughs> to ever listen to it. And of course she was like super supportive. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's good. But you could kind of tell she was like, um, yeah, you know, you can definitely tell it's the first mix. <laughs> so... Um, so then I just kept mixing and kept recording, um, with that board. And I started to learn like the difference of like how you transition, uh, 100 beat per minute song to a 130 minute beat per minute song. And just, um, kind of like the rules of mixing, you know, like, like when you first start out, you got to know the rules. And then once you've been doing it for a while, you kind of like, go, well, that was an interesting rule, but I don't think I'm going to use that rule anymore. I'm just going to go with my own style. Cause like, I know how to transition now from that. So um, so a lot of it, you know, the board was good. It was very, um, really, really basic, but it was still fun. And I was playing in front of, you know, friends, family, you know, five, 10 people. Occasionally I'd just kind of show up, there'd be a bunch of people partying and I'd just like hook it up <laughs> and just start playing music and just start mixing a little bit. Um, as well as I had some other people around that had DJ in the past and they were just kind of giving me some pointers and tips. I was like, cool. So I did that for about six months. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to spend $300. I'm going to get this, uh, I think it was 250 but with shipping, well, maybe shipping was free, but with tax. And, and then you had to buy a couple other cords with it. And then you had to buy the software as well. So yeah, it, it was probably about 350 in total. So I said, I'm going to do the Serato software. I'm going to get this Pioneer DDJ3 I watched all the reviews for it. I watched I watched a couple different like videos for different boards, and then finally I said I'm I'm gonna give this Pioneer one a try. It looks looks pretty good, pretty simple, you know as well. And we got two channels. Software wise, you can hook up four channels if you want to. I wasn't really interested in four channels. I was like, let's just start with two, work from there. Um, and I ended up practicing with that for about three years. I didn't really do any shows. I did a few shows, but it was more like I was just doing mixes um, in my studio. And then I had uh, access to a record label's whole catalog of hip hop music, all their artists. They had like over like 40 artists on there, they had hundreds of songs. And I said, well, let me just load these up. Let me just start mixing them. So I ended up mixing like 15 to 20 mixtapes in a couple years um, with the controller. It's a really nice controller. Um, I would recommend it for anybody that's serious and would like to just get really good that doesn't know anything about it. It's not too big of a board where it's like really confusing and complex. Um, 
and it's got some really cool like onboard effects and everything. So if you're just trying to mash out on a show, I still use the board um, at certain events, just because um, if it's a if it's a hip hop event, I mix hip hop really well with the board because I'm I'm really skilled at it. I upgraded recently to the Pioneer 1000. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Like, it's a four channel onboard. Um, you have everything you need on there. You can sync, you can, you can scratch. It's got time code, um, everything on the wheels, the jog wheels themselves. Um, it's got onboard, onboard effects that are amazing. Um, they add so much to your mixes. Um, I mostly mix electronic music on that one. And the reason I do that is because it's really great for electronic music. I mean, I don't mind mixing hip hop on it, but I'm kind of moving away from hip hop mixing and just going more towards actual electronic mixing. Pop pop music mixing is fine, but there's so much copyright stuff around it. And like you try to upload it to certain channels, you just get muted. And then your hour long mix, three songs on it are muted <laughs> in like the best moments. So it's like, uh, well, this is a waste of time. So I pretty much moved away from that, went strictly to electronic dance music. And I gotta say the board, the 1000, is amazing. I mean, Pioneer makes such a great um, controller, like just quality controller. Um, and I pretty much just practicing since the start of this last year, pretty much every night, every day, I'll take a few days off and I use it at all my shows. Sometimes I'll take the, um, the DDJ three. Um, it, like I said, if it's a hip hop show, I just feel more comfortable mixing with that um, versus the bigger board. Um, but all in all, um, I would say start somewhere small, like don't spend a lot of money on your first controller, you know, don't go all out. I mean, I like the idea of like growing into it, but let's be honest, you, you spend 1500 and you stop mixing and then it just sits over there and collects dust. So if you're really serious about it, I would recommend going with like a $250 mixer, uh, controller, and then, you know, use that for a little bit and then eventually upgrade it if you're continually uh, mixing all the time and you're having a great time so yeah um that's about it for today um i'm eventually here gonna upgrade to probably a two and a half thousand dollar board um maybe a five thousand dollar one i've seen a few of them i've been looking at so it'd be nice to have like you know super portable in your backpack you know one that you got to carry you know in like a carrying case and then also another one that you would have to bring in with a u-haul so I don't know, something to think about. Um, I'm always down to with experimenting with different boards as well. So if you have a favorite uh, board that you like to use, let me know in the comments. Um, if you like this video, like, subscribe, share. And yeah, I guess until then, we will talk to you later. DJ Sizzle signing off. And I want to thank you once again for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time. All right, peace for now.